Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be having a look at this Jeep JLU 6x6. Now, we've already had a look at Frog's Jeep JL, which was, of course, a collaborative project between him and yeah Buddy. and one of the interesting things about the 6x6 is that it basically takes everything about the normal version and turns it up like 15 notches. Now, if you would like more info on how you can get your hands on this thing, obviously it is a PC-only vehicle, and the actual process of getting it actually involves Frog's Patreon, so if you want to follow the link in the description box down below over to his Discord, that's where you'll find all of the necessary information. Now, I'm going to go ahead and dive right into the build, and then we're going to get it outside, we're going to flex it out, and we're going to see how an extra axle and two extra wheels actually uh, actually add to the experience of driving this thing. So, customization-wise, we're going all the way to the performance engine right off the bat, and gearbox-wise, I'm going to do the off-road, well, actually, I'm I'm going to do the highway transmission because it's still got the low ranges plus the higher speed gears. So that one's going to be a little bit better for a across the board build. Then we're going to do a crawler lift, although it is worth noting that we have a overlanding tow. And now the overlanding tow suspension is specifically designed to actually be able to haul the overlanding trailer that you can actually use with this thing, which I will show you guys uh, later on after we exit the garage. You may have seen it already in one of my previous videos with this Jeep or on my streams, but either way, if this is your first time seeing this thing, have no fear, I will run through that trailer. Now... Tires-wise, you can actually go pretty big on this thing. I mean, even with it being a 6x6, you can still go properly huge. I mean, you have a very, very, very wide selection of tires as well. You've got, let's see, you've got like BFG mud terrains, you've got stickies, you've got KM3s, you've got cut boggers, let's see, M, uh, let's see, 9060s, 90, you've got trepidors, you've got boggers, you've got rockzillas, you've got pit bulls, just about whatever you might want, super swampers as well, and then the list repeats once you get up to a 37. Now, I believe that the, okay, so yeah, 41 inch tires are the max size that you can put on this 6x6, and and for a 6x6, that's a lot. I mean, you would really have to worry about, you know, the tires touching, but with a 41-inch tire, they're pretty dang close, but they don't actually touch, which is super cool. The fact that he was able to get them that close, I absolutely love that. I love the fact that he was able to get them that close, and they still don't touch. Now, I think what we're going to go with for this one is I might go with the stickies. The stickies are absolutely freaking massive, and they suit the attitude of this Jeep really, really well. Now, the hood, of course, gets the high lift jack that you can go ahead and mount there, the hitch for the trailer, and the supplies that you can put in the back. I'm going to do all of that. And then we are going to do the custom high fenders. And let's see, the sliders, the roof rack we could do. But I'm not going to do that right now because there is the ability, obviously, to take the roof itself off. So when you take the roof off, and I'll show you that right now, it actually kind of uh, it kind of opens up the Jeep to a lot, more, uh, a lot more possibilities and a lot more potential. Now, as you can see right now, we only have the four seats in there. But what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go down to where it says seats and I'm going to swap them out for some race seats which actually adds a third row now what's cool about the third row is like legit if you think about it you could pretty much have all of your friends out on an off-road adventure all in race seats in your jeep that's freaking sick like I don't know I, I absolutely love that I'm going to put that spare on the back and I'm also going to throw a light bar up front circular light bar and I'm also going to make sure that I have a spare carrier and let's also see real quick, um, I'm going to swap out the bumpers because I do prefer front bumper number two. And then wheels wise, you really only get one option uh, with the stickies and that's these uh, specialty forged wheels. But I really like the specialties, so there's really nothing wrong with running them. Also, it's worth noting that you also have a fully modeled engine and like king coilovers, independent reservoir, long travel king coilovers on every single corner. I mean, how insane is that? Now, let's see what we can switch this thing up to in terms of colors. Now, I do like the purple, but I think these things look really good in blue. Blue really sets them apart, and I also think, I mean, obviously, the bright green is a really, really good choice as well. But I think for this build, I think we're going to go with one of the lighter blues. I think that looks really, really good. Let me just scroll through the colors real quick just to make sure we're not missing any other colors. Oh, that deep blue is really, really good, though. Really, really good. The only thing is, it's a little dark, and I, I, I kind of wonder whether or not it would show up really well in the sun, but let's find out. Let's find out. Oh, God, that looks 
That looks sick. That's amazing. I am going to go ahead and turn immersive mode on so we can see this thing with, like, no other interruptions on the screen. And let's go ahead and fire it up and get it over to the flex ramp. I do want to flex the rear axles first because I'm curious to know, like, how it responds when you try to back it up an obstacle. So let's ease it around. Oop. There we go. Oh, what? I didn't even have the all-wheel drive on when I backed up that flex ramp. And it still was like, yeah, no problem. I got it. Jeez, that's wild. That's absolutely nuts. The fact that it was just so willing and eager to back up that flex ramp, even when it wasn't in all-wheel drive, that's insane. Look at that. That is so nuts. That's absolutely wild. The fact that it's able to just, you know, able to just go right up the flex ramp, completely flex out, and also be that that incredibly flexible as a 6x6. And look, I didn't even realize that I had it in reverse still. I floored it, went straight back, and also still didn't flip over. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick front axle test as well. Now, the front axle should respond pretty similarly to the way, like, the standard ones do, like the 4x4s, but... God, that's an insane amount of flex. Absolutely wild amount of flex. Now, we are going to go ahead and attempt another trail that I haven't really tried much before. And I feel like it's going to be a really good way to test whether or not this thing could actually hang on, like, tight rock crawling trails. As opposed to, um, as opposed to, like, maybe some of the other more open trails. Or, also, whether or not it could actually keep up with, you know, maybe some smaller, shorter 4x4 vehicles. But let's go up here just a little bit further, and there's a trail that cuts off to the left that I feel like this thing might be able to do some damage on. Now, this guy right here, it goes right up into the mountains and actually kind of winds around on a weird path that I feel like we never actually take. So let's leave it in automatic mode first off. Make sure the all-wheel drive's on. Diff lock is always on. And, dude, like, straight off the bat, it has absolutely no care in the world about these hills. Now that's also partially down to the stickies because these are some of the these are some of the legitimate stickiest tires you could even throw on this thing. Now, once again, I mean obviously it's kind of in the name because they are the stickies, but still, like seeing them in action really does drive home the point of how incredibly sticky these tires actually are. All right, let's see how you do on this rock. I slowed down on purpose because I wanted to see how it would do kind of from a dead stop. Dude, actually the 6x6 adds so much extra grip because, obviously, you have more contact patches with the ground. And, you know, maybe if one of your tires or two of your tires are struggling on an obstacle, you've still got two, three, or four other tires that are on, you know, maybe a more solid surface. So, at that, like, I mean, at that point, you're pretty much able to do whatever you want or, you know, head down whatever trail you want without really worrying too much about where your tires are. You just kind of point it and go. I'm going to even, like, I'm going to pick up a, a wacky line that's probably not even supposed to be a line. See, look at that. It was just like, oh, that's not even a line, but you know what? We'll take it. Like, we'll just go that way. Might not be a line, but it's fine. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, it wants to move so bad. It wants to move so bad. All right, I'm going to put it in reverse. No, 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 no. Oh, that was too much. That was way too much reverse. Like, way too much reverse. What the heck? I did not mean to go for the start button. Okay, well, I guess I didn't want to climb up that one. Either way, these rocks are more like set-piece rocks. They're not like, you know, they're not grippy rocks. So that makes sense as to why it wouldn't, it, it wouldn't climb up those. That's not this thing's fault either. I mean, not at all. I just wanted to try a wacky off-the-wall line. There it is. Dude, I love when you drive, like, out from behind a hill and the sun comes out and hits this paint, because this paint looks gorgeous. It looks so good. So incredibly freaking good. All right, I'm gonna switch up my area here real quick. We're gonna recover, we're gonna leave the garage again, and I'm gonna grab the Overland trailer now so you guys can see that, which again, the Overland trailer is actually part of this Jeep pack. It's included with this Jeep pack. So let's ease it up right there, grab the caravan, and I believe that thing has a bunch of repair points and fuel. Let's see. So if we go to repair points, rear bumper, stock roll bar, stock doors, high lift jack, supplies, custom fenders, sliders, race seats, snorkel, sticky spare, circular light bar, spare carrier two. Uh, oh. 
Is there any fuel in the... What? Either I'm completely blind or there's no fuel or repair points in that Overland trailer. Oh, well. Either way, it is a really cool looking addition. I mean, but look. It's filled to the brim with fuel points. So, like, you can see the cans in there, but I don't know why it's not registering. So, rear bumper, custom bumper two, spare tire, sticky race seat sliders, custom fenders, supplies, high lift jack, wait a minute, hood mounted, stock doors, stock roll bar, rear bumper, custom bumper two, spare carrier. It's not wanting to show up. Oh, well, that's so weird. It's probably something I did wrong, and I don't know why. I don't know why it's not there. But like, even with the crawler suspension, I've got to say, it doesn't struggle with that Overland trailer behind it at all. Like, it really does not struggle one bit with having the Overland trailer behind it. By the way, I also love how the wheels and tires on the Overland trailer are legitimately like miniaturized, um, specialty forged wheels with the same stickies on them. I freaking love that. That's like, that's the coolest freaking thing. Right, let me throw the all-wheel drive on real quick. We're gonna send it down this trail. Well, not really trail, just send it down the main road to the trail. And some of y'all probably know already where we're going. And for those of you that do, for those of you that do, I'm really curious to know how this thing is gonna do on like a legit rock crawling trail now with a trailer behind it. Because originally that first trail was a little bit more of like, you know, kind of a backwoods trail, you know, something not too crazy. It was a little steep, but it was mostly dirt. Whereas the one that we're on our way to is like all out rocks. And especially due to the fact that we plan on doing it with a trailer. I'm real curious to see how this goes. All right, boys, six by six power. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna put it in automatic just so I can have a little bit quicker access to that power and torque. I mean, it hasn't even remotely complained about the trailer being back there yet. Well, maybe it has. Hang on. Before we let it, there we go. Bro, this thing rips. Even still with that trailer behind it, it still rips. Come on, there you go. I had to back off the throttle a little bit for it to find grip. If I can, oh, if I can ease it over, just ease it down over. Come on, come on, come on. There it is, there it is, there it is. It, dude, the way it like, I know that, that sidewall grip really isn't a thing in SnowRunner technically, but for whatever reason, the way he's programmed these stickies, they feel like something is happening with the sidewall while you're climbing up rocks. And I don't know if that's just like some tricky coding that he's done like when he programmed this thing or not, but like, man, they really do put in so much work on the rocks. And it really is like, it, it ignores the trailer. I mean, you wanna talk about not feeling like that trailer is even back there? Dude, it practically freaking ignores the trailer. It's like, nah, we're fine. I'm not even worried about it. And like, I haven't even been remotely concerned about that trailer being behind us, not even once during this entire drive have I been worried about the trailer. The trailer is just like, yeah, I'm good, I'm here, don't worry about me. Whoop. Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Oh, come on, trailer, you gonna get stuck on me now? I think it's the, oh, is it the, is it the axle? Or is it a tire? Something's not happy about that. There we go. There we go. All right, got it. Just had to bump it out of that rock. Come on, ease it on up the hill. This is going to be a tricky one for this because it is properly tight. I'm going to push it wide just a little bit. Because I think I could do that without flipping over. Yeah, we're good. Come on, ease it on up the hill. There we go. Not bad, not bad, not bad. And boom, dude, it dominated that hill and that like entire like tight turn and everything. 
And you would think that it wouldn't be all that good at tight turns because of how long of a wheelbase you need to have in order to have a 6x6, but man, even with a trailer, this thing knocks it out of the park. I really can't think of anything that would be worse about the 6x6 than the 4x4, unless you specifically wanted the 4x4. God, this 6x6 is so freaking worth it. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys next time.